So good evening, everybody. We have a great turnout tonight. Um, welcome to the Beverly Hills Bar Association panel on breaking into entertainment law. Um, my name is Jeff Monahan. Uh, I run my own practice, Jeff Monahan Law PC. Um, I've been doing this for uh, you know, two or, th or three or four years now. And uh, just to kick things off, uh, we uh, really encourage all the attendees to uh, take a look at joining the Beverly Hills Bar Association. I am going to post in the chat right now um, the details to register. You can uh, become a member for free for when you're in law school and I think for the first three years out of school. Um, when you're going to uh, sign up online, I just posted in the chat the, uh, the membership code you have to enter to get your, your free membership. Um, for me, it's been a, a tremendous resource to be in the BHBA. The BHBA has the biggest entertainment law section in the nation. Um, I personally have made some really good relationships with attorneys and I have seen a number of people get hired um, after starting to attend our monthly meetings. Um, so I really encourage everybody to, to join and start coming to our section meetings. Um, there's no better place to start than the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Um, all right, so I'd like to uh, introduce, uh, you know, our, our fellow pan panelists here. Um, we have Julie LaRue and Alyssa Block, who are both partners at the Winford Group. The Winford Group does uh, entertainment legal recruiting. Um, and we will hear a lot of really good insight uh, from Julie and Alyssa about uh, some of the popular career paths that people take to get to the, you know, really the upper executive level in entertainment uh, law. Um, we also have Jennifer Ajana, uh, Assistant Director of Career Services uh, from Chapman Law School. Uh, Stephen Divinaire, uh, Director of Talent Acquisition at uh, Viacom CBS. Stephen focuses on legal recruiting and I'm really excited to hear his insight on uh, you know, some of the career paths and, and ways that people have gotten into uh, Viacom CBS. Um, and uh, Nina Ameri, a managing partner of Ameri Law uh, PC. Uh, Nina started out with a, a tax background and found her way into entertainment law. So, uh, you know, I think that I'd actually like to kick things off here with, uh, with Nina. Um, you know, you told me a little bit over the phone about your, your background and how your tax background was kind of led, uh, led you into entertainment law. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about, about your story, Nina, and how you uh, made that transition. I am happy to tell this story. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories to tell um, because it's so uh, unusual. Um, so like many of you, uh, when I was a law student, um, I, I attended Pepperdine Law. Um, I was interested in entertainment. Um, I took every entertainment class you can think of. I was the president of the Sports Entertainment Law Society. Okay. I wanted to do entertainment law, but I'm not the only one. And so uh, it wasn't, uh, there, there weren't a plethora of jobs for a, a new uh, young lawyer. Um, and so, you know, one day I went to the Career Center and I saw um, a job post that said, um, you know, do you like to negotiate? Are you, are you good on the phone? And then it said, no bar results required. I said, okay, great, because I'm not going to find out. This was, uh, you know, right after the, the, um, June bar, July bar. I don't even remember. It's been so long. Um, and you don't find out till November. So I was like, oh, this sounds perfect. And then it said something about tax. So I just kind of ignored that part. And I said, 
it's fine. I'm going to do this for a couple months and I, and then I'm going to find my way in entertainment. So I got the job. Um, I worked for a tax relief company for three years and it was one of those situations where, you know, I wasn't planning on being there that long, but I ended up being really good at the work. And it was something very unexpected for me because I think I only took maybe one or two tax classes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of had that, that moment after three years where I'm like, why am I still here? I said, I wanted to be an entertainment lawyer. I told everyone under the sun, I wanted to be an entertainment lawyer. I took every class to be an entertainment lawyer and I'm doing tax controversy. This doesn't make any sense. Started sending out resumes, no hits, not one. Not, I don't think even one person called me back. Okay. Well, of course they didn't. All I've done is, is tax controversy. Why would they call me? And then I started getting creative. And what I did was I started literally cold emailing and cold calling Pepperdine law alum that were doing, mm-hmm. that were practicing entertainment law. And one day, one of the partners um, at Abrams Garfinkel Margolis Bergson picked up the phone and I was floored that, that so there was actually a live person on the phone that I could talk to. And so I gave him my pitch. I said, you know, um, I, I went to Pepperdine. I really want to get into entertainment. I've been doing tax controversy. This particular partner I knew was a litigator. So I, I fibbed a little bit and I said, I love litigation. I've, you know, I've always been fascinated with entertainment. I said anything I needed to say to get an interview. And I, and I got one. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it kind of from there, it was all about me just, you know, making that personal connection. Uh, and I got interviewed by four of the partners. The managing partner was obviously the most important person. And luckily he was the one with the tax background. So I, you know, I kind of opened up a, a dialogue with him about some of the tax work that I do. And I, I think I impressed him. Mm-hmm. Um, because after the second set of interviews, I, I got a job there. And so, you know, while I continued to do the, the tax work that I had done before, I was now at a real entertainment law firm. I was doing film deals, TV deals, reality TV, IP. Um, and, you know, it, it was such a kind of uh, untraditional way to get a job in entertainment. But so what? It works. Um, you can't, you can't be afraid to, to try different things or, or different avenues Mm -hmm. for a lot of people, you know, they're going to get that, that, uh, you know, job through the career center or, or some more traditional avenue, but there's a lot of people that are not. And so you don't, don't be afraid of how you get in the door, just get in the door. I, I couldn't agree with that more, Nina. Um, and one thing you meant, you said stood out to me in the beginning of that is you said that you, you felt like you really were good at the tax work. And that's one thing that I think is really important to stress to young people is no matter what job you end up at out of school, just get good at it. it mm-hmm. You cannot take the attitude that, oh, this is just temporary. I don't need to you know, kick butt at it. Get good at getting good. That is the, the number one uh, number one lesson, I, I think, uh, to, to start out. Um, let's move over to Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer, again, the uh, Assistant Director of Career Services at uh, Chapman Law School. Uh, Jennifer, uh, talk a little bit about yourself and uh, if you have any insight about some career paths that you've seen students take to get into entertainment law. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I have to say it's such an honor to be here with the Beverly Hills Bar Association. I'm a member, full disclosure, um, and I reap so many rewards from it. Uh, I was just telling my fellow fellow panelists, uh, it was my reporting this past few weeks for my MCLE and the Bar Association saved my butt because I got like 12 hours um, on Sunday watching videos. And if anyone is interested, please go watch the Marty Singer Um, I think it's in the War Stories series, him talking about the Ryan O'Neill case. Absolutely fascinating. He's just such an incredible trial attorney. So anyway, I digress. But everybody join. It it is so worth it, especially 
for law students. Um, so a little about me, at the end of undergrad, I knew I wanted to work in film. My father's a film history professor. And so it was a question of, do I go to film school or do I go to law school? Um, my mother's an immigrant, so it was decided I was going to law school, <laughs> um, but that was fine, right? I could still pursue, pursue entertainment as long as I got my, my JD. So that's why I ended up going to uh, law school and I was particularly and still am very interested in documentary film. So I went to law school with a very specific purpose and that was to be involved with documentaries. And I wasn't sure how I was going to use my JD, but I just knew I was going to get the JD and I was going to learn a lot about the law and then hopefully also the business side and then parlay that somehow. So um, I didn't work at law firms in, in law school. I worked at production companies. I worked, for example, uh, for Content Reel in New York, which does incredible PBS documentaries in the environment, for example. Mm -hmm. And after law school, I ended up working at the Tribeca Film Festival. Again, not in uh, the legal department. I was actually in sponsorships and partnerships. But that was great because I worked closely with the sales team, right? So I was helping them put together the deals, making the contracts, um, ensuring contractual compliance mm -hmm. um, with all these terms. So for example, I mean, this is something very minor, but we'd have in contracts for an after party um, for a film showing Heineken would be the sponsor. And the angle of the Heineken bottles at the after party would have to be very specific. So those are the kind of terms that we'd be looking at in the contracts. Um, so that, that is how I ended up in, in entertainment. And I, th I think just to answer your second question there for, for law students, it's, it's really important to realize there's, there's kind of these two worlds that are constantly crisscrossing in that you can work in what we call a JDA capacity, which is what I did, or you can actually work in a capacity where you need your license. And for me, I had my license and I was very, very proud of it, but I wasn't actually like, using it um, day to day. So I, I think with, with that in mind, the number one advice I give my students is you have to realize entertainment law is a little bit of a misnomer. It's really the entertainment industry. And within it, there are so many different practices um, or like JDA practices, which is what, what I did. I think that's a really good point, uh, Jennifer. Uh, one thing that took me a while to learn getting out of school was uh, that you, to, in entertainment law, um, whether you're doing music or movies, uh, it's hard to learn the industry and how all the pieces move together. The business of the entertainment is very different from any other industry. Um, and you know, if I can just jump ahead, I do have two books that I usually recommend. Um, to, to people, and I recommend these two last year as well. Um, one of them is Hollywood Deal Making by an author's name, uh, Daniel Yanklevitz and Diana Appleton. And the second one is Everything You Need to Know About the Music Business by Donald Passman. Um, it's also good to read, uh, you know, Deadline and Hollywood Reporter to understand a lot of the names and, and companies and everything and how they work together. Um, but for me, it's, it's still, a, and kind of an always learning. I, I consider myself pretty good at learning business, um, but entertainment industry is really kind of challenging. So you gotta... I'd like to jump in and just add one more Go piece ahead. of advice, yeah. which, and, and Jennifer knows how much I love uh, uh, law clerks. Uh, I think that externships are critical. Um, if you really want to do entertainment law, you got to get your feet wet and you have a great opportunity as a law student to learn and get school credit at the same time. And some of those opportunities do lead to employment. So, you know, as much as it's important to take all your required classes, I really, really feel strongly that externships are a part of your learning. Yeah, I agree with that, Nina. Um, Steven, let's move over to you. Uh, Steven, again, he works uh, for Viacom CBS. Uh, and Steven is the director of talent acquisition, uh, focusing on legal recruiting. So Stephen, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the positions you recruit for, what you look for, and if you have any insight about how, you know, the interview and recruiting process has changed in the last year, um, we'd love to hear it. Wow, those are big questions. <laughs> Where do I start? Um, Stephen Debonair and dire director of talent acquisition, that is a fancy name for recruiting. 
Um, some people are like, oh, you're a talent management or a talent agent, not accurate. Um, if you're you know, a producer or a director, I will wish you well, but um, I hire lawyers for a living. So I've been doing that for the last five years. Um, and prior to that, I worked in toys, I worked in music. I always find an industry that I'm passionate about. I was the kid who wanted to be a movie critic when I was younger growing up in Chicago. Not a movie critic, however, I'm still in the industry. So um, I hire across brands. I hire for Paramount Pictures, Paramount Television, all the Viacom cable brands, um, as well as Pluto and soon CBS as well. Um, a lot of my focus is manager up to executive vice president. So I don't recruit for a lot of the more junior positions, but it's across the gamut. Nina mentioned as well, um, as, as did Jennifer, you know, it could be production attorneys, it could be employment law, it could be production content review, um, where you watch TV all day and you basically get to figure out, you know, um, intellectual property and trademark. Um, it could be privacy. So there's so many different facets within entertainment. I think a lot of people sometimes just think of production, business and legal affairs and drafting and negotiating. That's definitely a big part of what we do, especially on the West Coast. But my East Coast counterparts, um, not as much. So they hire more in the privacy, M&A, different things like that. Um, you know, studio life is great once you're in, but it's getting in and fresh out of law school, it can be a challenge. I don't have a lot of, I have my JD and here's my next gig. Typically it's around two years plus, full disclosure. Um, those externships, internships, whether it is with other studios, production companies, um, boutique law firms, all of those are gonna be really crucial. Um, but then, you know, my advice is always kind of go get that experience at a production company, at, at a law firm, and then come back to me in two years. Because realistically, <laughs> that's, that's where I need you. And that's counsel, director, and above. Um, but there's so many facets of entertainment law. In the meantime, you know, have informational screenings, meet people, panels like this. Um, it's amazing. I told a lot of my attorneys I was going to be on this, and so many of them are part of the Beverly Hills Bar Association and are big fans. So definitely be, be part of an association. This seems like a really good one as well. Mm -hmm. And interviewing change. We're all virtual. I have been almost a year, as have many of us, and we're told probably through the summer, maybe the fall, that until we get back in the office. So as a result, get to know your computer, get to know your lighting, get to know what you're wearing, get to know distractions, get to know all those things you never had to think about before. Mm -hmm. um, because this is the impression recruiters have of you. This is the impression hiring managers have of you. You wanna be professional, you wanna be timely, you wanna bring your best self, you wanna do the research on the company, that's always good. Um, if, you're, if you are interviewing for Paramount Pictures, I will ask you what your favorite Paramount movie is, get ready. Um, you better have an answer because you know it's kind of a big deal, we take it seriously. But um, so it's changed dramatically. The cool thing about Zooms is no commute for me, which I like, I have to say. But also um, I am on probably 10 to 15 Zoom calls a day and I get to know my candidates in a different capacity than even if they were coming in briefly in person. So there's a lot of good stuff about it, but there's nuance. We've been doing it a year. I'm always surprised, you know, after a year when people are like over here or down here or something like that. So center yourself. I'm a fan of lighting. I've got two lights on me right now. Otherwise, it's, I'm in shadow. I'm not going to lie. It's Hollywood, right? So anyway, hopefully that's helpful. Yeah, I think that there's something to be said if you're going to... You can be a Zoom consultant. <laughs> you could be. I think there's something to be said about having a good production. If you want to get into entertainment production, there's something to be that's said right. about having a well-produced interview. Exactly. And Nina, I, I hope that I would have taken your phone call as a tax attorney, but I can't guarantee that I would have. To be perfectly honest, <laughs> yeah, now you that I know have. you, I'd be like, exactly. well, of course I would have gotten right. that phone call.
Yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, no one was uh, yeah, excited to hear hear me uh, on, on the other line, but that's okay. I found my way. But I'm really impressed with your story. Abrams was one of the one of the better firms out there. So good for you. That's fantastic. All right. So let's move over to, uh, I guess we'll do uh, uh, Alyssa first um, from the Winford Group. She and Julie are partners. Um, she, Alyssa and Julie, you know, I, I, when, you know, we were chatting on the phone, I, I, I know that you guys we really recruit more for uh, candidates a little bit with more experience, right? You're not usually placing, very rarely placing people right out of school, but you're going to have a lot of insight for us on how people make that transition. Um, and I, one thing I want our uh, viewers to come away with here is maybe what areas of law are good to maybe target early on. Um, I worked in you know, employment law. I always, I think it's pretty, uh, a cool, mm -hmm. pretty lab, makes a pretty easy transition. So um Tell us a little bit about the Winford Group and um, some career paths we, you see people take. Happy to do so. So, so uh, the Winford Group's about 20 years old, and we started as strict legal recruiters, kind of moving people from one big firm to another. Um, my, we have a third partner, and her husband was the managing partner of Loeb & Loeb in film finance. So we kind of asked him to open his Rolodex and started doing some in-house placements in film finance and film production. And then I'd say, you know, within five, six years, we kind of broke open TV. Um, for a very long time, it was kind of TV features and television. Now entertainment is, if I get a young attorney that calls me and says, I wanna be an entertainment lawyer, what does that mean? Like that, that's so large and so broad. We tell our candidates to really research like, is it production or distribution or is it international or is it documentaries? You know, Nina, I was listening to your story and I was thinking that you should have called Sky Moore. He was a tax attorney. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways that your interest and, and Jeff to kind of piggyback on what you were saying, be good at what you like to do. Um, mm -hmm. Have that kind of follow through in your resume, like show what your interests are and your passion for the industry, whether it's, you know, going to an agency and becoming you know, it used to be go in the mailroom desk and, and your path to being an agent, but those were all lawyers. They're still lawyers. So I think that knowing a lot about the industry is very important. Um, the books that you listed are great. Uh, Dina Appleton is from Canada and she started at the CBC in a small firm. And, you know, Dan is at Sony and has been a legal affairs guy for a long time. So I think it's really knowing, um, knowing the market, knowing what you're doing. Uh, practice areas, you can get in all these different paths. You can get in unemployment. You can get in with tax. You can get in with M&A. Uh, Hulu only wanted M&A attorneys for the longest time. So part of it is knowing um, the market, knowing the companies and, and doing your research, like Stephen said, knowing what their slate is. If you want, if, if you love TV, I have I had a young attorney come in and just was crazy about TV. They consumed TV. They knew it. They ate it. They, they just could talk about anything. They talked about who the showrunners were. I want to add Variety and Hollywood Reporter Esquire to the list of things to read. There are so many resources out there. There's people are blogging about the industry. Read entertainment careers. You know, there's a lot of places online to look. Um, but most importantly, who was it that said extra? Nina, you said externships, internships. The majority of resumes that I see of people breaking in those first jobs are their internships. It, like Stephen said, it gives them their their feet get wet their hands get wet, Who's something, something gets wet and they get the experience and you need that mostly the most prolific hirers are the production attorneys. That's everyone's making content. And so this town can't find enough solid production attorneys. That's what's on our desk for the majority. Um, there's certainly niche practices. I saw a question about music. Licensing is getting hotter and hotter, obviously. Um, there's, there's a lot of ways in and I, I don't want you to think that there's just one path. There's, you know, Nina told one story. There's a ton of different paths. Jennifer told another story. So it, it's tenacity. That's the key ingredient. If you want to do it, you're going to do it, but you're going to have to work really hard at it because there's a lot of people that want to be entertainment attorneys, like Nina said. Mm -hmm. So Julie, you can talk a little bit about um, like who we recruit for. I... Well, we recruit for a lot of indie um, film companies um, like uh, Annapurna, Indian Paintbrush, MRC is a big client. We've worked with HBO, E1, um, 
for doing a lot of searches for Endeavor content right now as they grow. Um, and one thing, everyone said such great things. And I just, I want to add, like, know the industry, know, you know, talk about the issues with the writer's skill, be able to, when you interview, mm -hmm. be able to discuss the topics because it's a business and to really try to understand, you know, it, I don't say I love films, you know, you like, be sure you know, like, you know, why Netflix is buying these films and read, read up on everything. So um, Nina, I loved your story because I feel like there's so many paths into entertainment. I think Alyssa and I were just going back and forth of different candidates we met and the ways they did it. And mm -hmm. um, people were saying, and um, avoid personal injury, but I have, a, I know an attorney who was personal injury attorney and he found somebody else that was one once one just like Nina and they wanted to pay it forward so they hired someone like that so <laughs> I would say reach out to people who had similar paths work your alumni associations mm -hmm. um, it's a very tight-knit community so try to build that network you're gonna grow up and these will be your peers you'll be working against them with them so just try to build that community um, help each other out. Um, and, you know, you'll be growing in your career together with the people with your network. When there, when there's not a pandemic, you should go to breakfast, lunch, or dinner with a different person every day. And yeah. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Yeah. Yeah. Every and, day. And make sure you, you know about that person. You've done your research. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't yeah. have superficial relationships with <laughs> yes. people have deep relationships. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter how many people, you know, it's the depth of right. those relationships. Yes. Being genuine is, is really important. Right. You know, I mean, if you have hobbies that you share, mm -hmm. um, some family connection or, or anything, you know, geography, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I did when I was networking for jobs and I would go to those meetings is I would try to come away with it with, Sure, something else to talk about, but I would ask about book recommendations and stuff like that. And so I would read the book that they told me about and I would email them later saying, hey, thanks for the recommendation. Um, here's like maybe or maybe there's an article or a podcast. I said, I listened to this or heard read this that is kind of related to what we were talking about. So when I, you know, it gives me kind of an excuse to make another touch point with them, you know, a few months down the line, but also shows them that like, I'm paying attention, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, it shows follow through too. I mean, that's, that's critical. It's yeah. critical. I mean, it's the core of what we do is follow through. I love all this advice. And I also would like to make a book plug. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's making movies by the incomparable Sydney Lumet. Um, this is not necessarily a handbook for lawyers, obviously it's by a director, but this really goes step by step through the movie making process. And you, this is a, move, a book you can always, always find things to talk about in a in, in networking um, situation, but just to really understand what is this thing called cinema, right? Like this book is going to do it. So that's making movies. I, I literally keep this on my nightstand. I just pulled it over. I'm going to give head. another piece of advice about something that I did when I was a very young lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I grew up in LA, so I had a lot of creative friends and I, I literally was like a production assistant on some of their movies, not because I wanted to be a producer, but because I wanted to know, okay, how do you make a movie? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I mean, I really think that having that experience, really understanding what happens on a movie set, who are the players, it, it really, it, I mean, I think it translates into the actual legal work that we do. Um, it's, and it's fun, you know, when you're young and you have time, do all those things. I think so too. I mean, I can speak that. I think that is something that kind of held me back is like, I didn't have that any experience whatsoever on set. And I really didn't know the the business very well. I still don't know, you know, what directors work with, what producers and actors and stuff like that. And I mean, that's an important part of those conversations to really mm -hmm. kind of know the players in the industry and where people are going and jumping from, um, you know, it's, it's not something that you can just, like if you know how to read a contract, you can kind of get into it and start doing, you know, it's important to know, like stay up on the news and that stuff. I, I really mean that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the boilerplate and deadline is, is going to be your best friend mm-hmm. for that kind of information. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're all free. Like, it's easy. You just sign yeah. up and you get an email. It's there's no, there's no excuse why you shouldn't know about this business. I mean, you know, yeah, deadline, yeah. Hollywood Reporter, Film Independent. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, IndieWire. IndieWire is another mm-hmm. good one. Mm-hmm. Literally five minutes. Yeah. Just go, yeah. you know, read it. But even to that point, join, go to events that Film Independent puts on. I, right? I went to a lot of their events when I was a young lawyer. I mean, I went to film festival. I went everywhere. There's no place I didn't go. Let's just say that. <laughs> I want to add another one, which is Women in Film. Mm-hmm. It's a really great good, organization. Huge Excellent. networking organization. Um, and they put on great events when we ever have, have events in person again. But that's, um, we've been members for years. And it's it's a wonderful organization. I also, then, uh, um, if I can just tell, oh, I'm sorry. No, please. Another thing I think that everyone should be aware of is that there's different um, big hiring entities, whether it's, you know, the big firms and entertainment departments of a big firm, which are going to be a much more institutional practice or the boutique firms or the talent firms or the production entity law firms or in-house or agencies or guilds. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to break into the industry and a lot of different hiring entities. And you should know the differences and what those jobs like. What does in-house mean? It's going to be completely different working for Stephen at Viacom as it is going to be at SAG. Or, you know, so knowing what in-house means and what those different roles are is important as well to help you navigate where you want those first jobs. I think guild experience is really, really great. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the one thing that I really like my career path and I love all of the firms that I was at. But the other day I was actually thinking about this because I'm, I'm repping a lot of writers these days. And I thought to myself, wow, wouldn't it have been nice if I worked at the WGA for even a year or two, just so I could really, you know, get that experience. I mean, it's such a um, core thing, understanding how these unions work and, and, and their contracts. So um I really, I would really take a hard look at, at the guilds um, as a young lawyer. Yeah, and I was just going to add, um, we were talking about organizations like the Beverly Hills Bar Association, but, you know, as a recruiter, I'm also wanting, you know, to, to reach a diverse, a diverse slate of candidates. So I'm going to post with BISLA, you know, Black Entertainment Sports Attorneys, I'm going to post with the LGBTQ. I'm going to post with, you know, women in entertainment law as well. So utilize those resources in addition to people that you, you know, had internships with, went to law school with, your professors. A lot of your professors are working for studios, things like that. So within your network, um, I think there's a lot of resources that a lot of people don't really tap into. We have a question in the chat about... Um, you know, maybe areas of law to kind of stay away from, you know, Julie told this story about a personal injury attorney who, who got in with a firm. And w- the one thing you, you will get it by doing personal injuries, you'll get litigation experience. And that is, makes it easier to translate into entertainment litigation. If you want to litigate, if you want to be a production counsel, maybe that's not the, the right path though. So you have to kind of know what skills you want to develop or mm-hmm. what, like what you want to do. Like I, and I'm not a litigator. I really don't have any interest in litigation. I do have some litigation experience, but you know, to, to, to get into litigation, if, if you have almost any type of litigation, that's at least a start, but some areas that I've spoken to people about maybe staying away from like family law really doesn't have a whole lot of uh, mm-hmm. uh, crossover. Um, workers compensation really doesn't have a whole lot of cro- crossover. Um, criminal law is just a whole different kind of am- animal. I don't really see a whole lot of crossover with that. Um, personal injury can work. If you want to litigate, I think that can work. Um, some other ones, um, you know, I think that uh, I think it was Alyssa or Julie said that, uh, you know, Hulu was looking for securities attorneys. Securities. Mm-hmm. Can't go wrong with corporate. Yep. Very Can't different. go wrong with corporate. Yep. Yeah. Security. Contract law, transactional lawyers. That's what we need. Yeah, labor law, labor and employment, um, any type of contract drafting, copyright and trademark, uh, you know, licensing. 
But, you know, like I've been looking at some securities agreements recently and boy, those are tough to read. I mean, there is a lot <laughs> of stuff in there. And if you can get, if you can parse through those contracts effectively, that makes you a more valuable person. And look, you can look stuff up online and make, mark it up and ask people questions about it. And, you know, you don't need to be working somewhere to start getting some of that experience, start a blog, start a, you know, a, 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 an Instagram channel or something where you're just looking through contract clauses. Um, you know, those, if you know how to read a contract and you know how that those kind of operate, um, that's a really, that's what you're going to need to do to get into, uh, uh, you know, into, into entertainment uh, transactions. Anybody There's else? another interesting area is immigration law, but on the business side where, you know, you can work at a production company and focus on bringing over talent. So that's kind of like a, another pathway. You know, I, I was just about to say my, my, busy, my biggest success to date at Chapman Law is a student that I placed right after he passed the bar at a company. I won't say where, but you all know it and we all want to work for it. Um, and he didn't have any entertainment experience in terms of his internships. Those had all been with immigration uh, law firms. He did do uh, Chapman's entertainment clinic. So he had gotten the clinical experience. Um, so he had that on there. He also had some language skills and this big name um, hired them, hired him to work on immigration issues for talent. Yep. And also then it was also working with minors and, and, and their, their talent uh, side of that. So um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It, it kind of is skies the limit in many ways, but then there are the few places where if you go that direction, you can absolutely, you know, crisscross tap back over. Um, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a much uh, heavier lift. Yeah, I agree. Let me see here. What else do we want to touch about? Uh, I was going to say someone mentioned music law and I've seen it. Sorry, yeah. Jeff, I'm, I'm cutting you off, you but um, I, I'm seeing more and more students who are interested in music law as well. You know, film is, is really my forte, but um, being geographically open. So like I'm, I'm based in LA. Um, so for example, like going over to Tennessee to Nashville, a lot of opportunities over there in your summers, especially now with this virtual world. Um, go, if, so if you're not located in Tennessee, um, you can maybe get a, a virtual um, a job, you know, same with a lot of music opportunities in Chicago, obviously New York. Um, but I was also going to say there's something called reciprocity. So for all you law students out there, I saw that there's a few in, in New York, for example, you want to come out to LA after graduation or, or for summer, you want to see what the LA opportunities are, connect with your career services office at your law school. And what they can do is apply for reciprocity at a law school geographically located where you're interested, and then you get access to that school's job board. And all of us CSO um, offices, we all know each other. We all usually go to big conferences every year. We're all really collaborative. But that's a really neat way to get a little creative, which you have to do if you want to be in this creative world. That's really good insight, Jennifer. You know, I, I think that's something that a lot of people don't uh, know they can do or consider. Um, you know, sometimes I think people talk themselves out of opportunities like that before they really give it a, a full thought. And if you really take advantage of everything that, you know, your school can offer. Um, sometimes that's the door that you need to be open. Um, Steven, uh, I wanted to ask you a couple more questions about, yeah. um, do you have any, I guess I would say anonymous, you know, stories you could tell about maybe people making mistakes in, in, in interviews or something that you've seen that uh, maybe uh, just kind of a common mistake uh, other than maybe not having an answer for, uh, you know, or being, you know, well informed about the company? Well, in 25 years of recruiting, let's see, how long is this panel discussion? Yes, I've definitely <laughs> seen a couple, seen a couple in my time. Um, you know, I would say recent, you, everyone here knows entertainment law is one of the most competitive. It just is, especially in Los Angeles. Every, so many people want to get into entertainment law. So how do you distinguish yourself? The way not to is, um, as silly as it sounds, thank you notes. Thank you notes. I can't even tell you so many of my hiring managers, even for super executive positions, they're like, they never thanked me. They never wrote me an email. 
it's a really big deal. And it's something for whatever reason that not everybody does. And we're You're not talking- You a heart attack, Stephen, yeah. as your <laughs> services yeah. um, director. I, yeah. I cannot tell you yeah. how hard it is to get a call from an employer, yeah. like, let's say Nina, who, who you know, sometimes will look at our students as candidates and, and has hired some of our students and say, I didn't get a thank you, or God forbid, I didn't get, they didn't respond to my request to interview. Yeah. But the, yeah, thank you for, for carrying the sure. flag. Thank no, you. it's just one of those things that I think we all think it's just implied. Of course, that's going to happen. And yeah. also, it's not only the thank you note, it's being thoughtful about it. It's yeah. not just sending the same one and just changing the name because sometimes yeah, pl- Please notes. change, please, when you copy and paste, <laughs> go ahead and, and, and change that name. Change the name. Uh, sure and by the way, match. no one will ever hire you if you make that mistake ever yeah. ever and yes. i'll say it one more time because all i talk about to all of my law clerks is proofreading yeah this is the, the foundation of our practice that's it please don't do that please yeah i mean you're being hired to read and redline contracts and draft and you wrote your thank you note on your phone when you were on your bicycle consider your thank you note as detailed as you, as you would your resume it really is because it shows how thoughtful you are, what a good writer, your details. So I think that's something, obviously it's a trigger point for so many of us, but I think that's- Yeah, I, I have one more that's a big trigger yeah. point. They Please. do the same thing when they're submitting resumes. Yeah. And I got a resume with the wrong name. The content was directed to me because it was about entertainment law, yeah. but it was it was for a, another uh, lawyer who is a PI lawyer. I looked yeah. them up because I was curious. I'm like, oh, wow. Let me see. Did they at least make the mistake of another entertainment lawyer? It yeah. was so bad. That, that was a PI lawyer. <laughs> you guys, you just can't do that. That's not we're, we're paid to, to read and to review. Yeah. We pay. Yeah. We're, we're paid a lot of money to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other than that, you know, um, dress for the interview. It doesn't matter if it's Zoom, you know, you may want to be wearing your pajamas. You could have your pajama bottom, bottoms on. I will never know, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, look professional. Treat it like it's a real interview, like you were going into an office. Um, that's a really big deal. And also this industry, there's so much to be passionate about. Show that passion with the research, with your movies, with your TV, with your music. Um, Tell me a story why you really wanna be in this industry because you need to distinguish yourself from 300 other people who want that job as well. So do the research, know who you're interviewing with, know the company, know the movies, the television, whatever, but also go in and be really enthusiastic because if you're not, this is in the industry for you. There's so many other opportunities Mm-hmm. But I really think that distinguishes people as well. Hopefully Stephen, I'd love it. to get your insight as yeah. well as Julie and Alyssa's and Nina's and Jazz, yeah. all of yours. Um, <laughs> all of it. <laughs> so I really encourage students to have an interest line. Um, okay. But I, you got to make it interesting. You got to make it count. Yes. So podcasts, great. You know, okay, what does that tell me? Yes. Um, I obviously have Cold War documentaries yes. on my interest line, and I've always been asked about it. And then I get to talk about going to the Venda Museum and, you know, nerd out with someone like someone's going to, we're just going to be able to bond over it. And yep. I always tell students, look, it really, that is the place where you can distinguish yourself, especially if you're one, you don't have any entertainment experience, you know, pop in. Yep. What, what, what is your little thing that you love? Maybe it's Cold War documentaries. If so, send me an email, let's nerd out. Um, and then also that's a place for, um, to create talking points in the mm-hmm. interview. Right. Yep. And show that you are a well-rounded kind of interesting person. So everyone on board with, with interest line, cause I, I have heard, I I really like it. I look at so many resumes every day. In fact, I'll give you an example from today. I spoke with a production attorney on her interest lines, amongst other things, was ice cream connoisseur. That's a great icebreaker. I'm like, what's your favorite ice cream? What does that mean? What's your favorite? Do you like salt and straw? Do you like savory versus sweet? So if you're going to do it, don't have like sports and the sky, you know, get more specific. Um, because it is a great icebreaker, especially now when we're getting to know each other virtually. So I like it. One I question concur. we have 
in the uh, in the chat, um, maybe Alyssa and Julie can answer this better. Is there's a question? Can you comment on the differences between working in entertainment law on the West Coast versus the East Coast? Mm. Oh, Stephen can speak to it too because Viacom yeah. has both. Yes, I, I find the East Coast is programming um, and much smaller. You know, what I mean HBO, Viacom. You know, the the networks had New York offices. Some small indies, I hate to say it, but we recruited for the Weinstein Company for years. Really good revolving door, good client. Um, I worked above the Weinstein Company. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew lawyers at Tribeca Film. So, you know, yes. I mean, I think that the, on the West Coast, there's just more opportunity. The New Yorkers flock to the, to the West Coast to get jobs in entertainment, 100%. I think there's more music and theater in New York. There is, yeah, obviously theater, you know, I mean, yeah. um, and also agency work. There's really solid ICM. Yeah. There's really in solid house. agency yeah. work on the, on the, in New York. And a couple of small um, boutique, you know, obviously the big firms, there's the Paul Hastings and the, you know, there's a couple of the big firms, but the institutional work in the big firms is still, the entertainment practices are going to be on the West Coast for sure. So and I, I would agree it. with that. I think for us, because Viacom, our corporate is in New York, so mm -hmm. we have larger teams, but a lot of our, my legal positions out there are more on the corporate side, more in the M&A side, mm -hmm. more in the privacy. A lot of my production attorney positions do tend to be in LA, mm -hmm. because even though we're virtual now, we won't always be. And they want, they want my, the production attorneys to be where the productions are. And that's where most of the filming, et cetera, mm -hmm. happens. So. Now, but I do want to say there's an exception to every rule. Julie has yeah. a number of clients on the East Coast, um, Big Beach, I think, and Sky Mound. I mean, you know, Madison Square Gardens hires the top attorneys in New York. So there's definitely opportunities and there's paths, you know, to, to become a rock star in New York as well. Mm -hmm. Another question we have is, you know, what do you recommend a law student to do? If they're not in an LA law school and their school doesn't have a whole lot of entertainment resources, I think transfer. I would answer. I <laughs> oh. What did you say? Transfer. I said transfer. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, if you, you, I think it would, if you can find, you have to find some common interest or or common, you know, ground there. Um, or even if that common ground is somebody else at a school that doesn't have law, you know, a, a big entertainment law sec uh, section and ask them, hey, how'd you do this? Like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe don't look for people who went to SC and UCLA and Pepperdine to network with because they're maybe not going to be able to relate to your story a little bit more. But maybe if somebody, even if it's a school that's really has no connection to yours, um, I think that they might be a little more sympathetic and have a little more time for you too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And also for me, you know, if you want to get into production and I think Alyssa and Julie would agree, just do transactional work. You know, you can yeah. still draft, you could still negotiate. It may not be entertainment deals, but you can do a lot of the fundamentals that are going to be transferable to something within entertainment. Yeah. If you're working on independent contractor agreements and employment agreements, like that's, you're going to have to do that somewhere at some point. So knock it out early if you can. Another thing that I've found that's really good to know um, that I didn't really expect when I was in school was knowing how insurance works mm. uh, and getting, you know, how to get the right policies and how to get maybe uh, surplus coverage and how the exclusions work and how to, you know, read a policy and go through and, and get coverage or, or notify them of a claim and stuff like that. And just generally how the passing of liability works um, and some of those things. Insurance is a pretty important part, definitely underrated part of, uh, you know, uh, corporate law and uh, entertainment law in general, I think. I was also going to say, um, you know, think, don't forget your undergrad. Right, you can yeah. you can network with through your undergrad. So I went to mm -hmm. NYU and and I, I use that almost weekly for mm -hmm. it's such a big network. Um, and and also think about if that if your undergrad doesn't have a film school, but maybe they do, so you can also go that path. But are there other universities in your area that do have film schools? They're going to love seeing a law student come in. Right, there's always film 
uh, student films that are going on where they need someone to look over. You're obviously not going to be able to give legal counsel, but, but you can still get involved in, and get some experience that way. One thing that I did too is um, I went to UCLA for undergrad and they have a really popular screenwriting program. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I took the class, not because I want to be a screenwriter, but because I wanted to be in the room with all those people. So put yourself in situations where you're going to meet people that are in the entertainment business. You know, I mean, I, they all figured out why I was really there. I mean, but it, it's fine. Um, I was there and that's what mattered. Nina, there's an, um, there's an amazing program and I'm upset every day that this didn't exist when I was in law school um, at UCLA called the UCLA Documentary Film Legal Clinic. Um, oh, so I, I, would, I went to Loyola up the street, but let's say if you are in, in Tennessee or New York, right? Well, um, the directors of that clinic just did a presentation at Sundance. It was absolutely fantastic. And that was open to the public. So with the internet, with, with festivals going virtual, there are so many ways to access other law schools like UCLA that have great entertainment um, programming and people. And, you know, if, if, if I was that student after I saw that at Sundance, I'd get right on LinkedIn, message Dale Cohen, who runs it, who's also a special counsel at Frontline, like such an impressive man, right? And all of a sudden you've made a new relationship, which to that point, and Jeff, you're probably gonna say this, but I see there's 185 participants right now. I hope I have 185 LinkedIn requests. Tomorrow. <laughs> All of you to connect with me, especially these, there's so many virtual things going on. We can't exchange business cards afterwards. I'm gonna tell you, not everyone is gonna say, connect with me on LinkedIn tomorrow you should do it. That building the relationship bubble starts 1L, if not before. I love it. I totally agree with that. And um, here's the other thing too. It's if the volunteer opportunities. Yeah. So volunteer at film festivals, just get something on your resume that shows that you want to be in this business. Because I'll tell you one thing, when people apply to a Mary Law, guess whose resumes go to the top? People who care. People who really show, you know, entertainment and IP, that's my passion. Yeah. We have a couple of questions in the chat about uh, whether, you know, taking an internship at like a talent agency in the summer, um, maybe even in the, in the mail room or something is a good path to take. I can't answer that question. I'm seeing you guys nod your heads. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Do it. Yep. It'll teach you the industry, the agencies. It, you know, they're cutthroat, but they'll teach it to you. Yeah. You'll, you'll uh, cry. <laughs> you could. Or, you know, or you're you like it. Nina or says that it. with a smile. The only reason I'm saying it is because, you know, and I, by the way, for my law clerks, I tell them all of my horror stories. Oh, yeah. All of them. All of the times that I did something stupid. All the times I got yelled at in front of half the office. I tell them all of these stories because it's better that they hear the truth than that we coddle them. You mm -hmm. know, this is a tough business. It's not for everybody, but if you really want to be in it and you love it, you will make it one way or another, you will find your path. One thing I wanted to ask you, Nina and, and everybody else really, but Nina in particular is, um, you know, what things would you say uh, are important for somebody to, to do and succeed and stand out in that first job. I know from my experience in making when I hire some law clerks is like, just make it so I don't have to think about the problem anymore. If you can just take <laughs> this off my plate and just do it, then I'm fine with it. Like, I don't want to email back and forth and just, this is your baby, this is yours now, just like take it as far as you can take it. And like, when I get, when I see emails come in and it's just like, all this stuff is done and I didn't have to do anything. I'm like, this is amazing. No, definitely somebody obviously who's paying attention, who's being thorough, but really for me, you know, be intellectually curious. Mm -hmm. If I ask you, you know, we're working on this deal, these are the issues and you come back and you say, you know what, Nina, I also think we should add this provision because X, Y, and Z, that's what's going to impress me. That's, that's what shows that you care and that you really want to be here and you care about the work. Read every contract like 
it's a test and somebody's waiting to see if you're going to miss something. That's how I read every contract I, I analyze. I will highlight every single word and I'll show my clients. And another thing that like I teach my law clerk is when you're going through a contract, like if you just send it back to the client, it doesn't have any notes on there. It, they're going to be like, well, wait, did he read it or not? I will put notes in, in the contract. I'll highlight the entire page and just say, fine. Like, just so you know that I'm thinking of it, like, show me that your brain is working and that you've checked it over. Like, that's better than just leaving it blank because I, I need to know that you thought it through. We've got about five minutes left here. Um, you know, I'd be curious if, uh, if, if anybody has any other books or resources, now would be a good time to start posting them in the chat. We're going to try and do a couple more questions. Um, let's see what we have here. Jeff, while you're looking at that, I just, I really want to make another pitch for networking, <laughs> especially if you want to work in the entertainment industry yeah. in any capacity. I, I, I wasn't kidding about blowing up my LinkedIn, like, take advantage of this. One of my biggest regrets is that I wasn't better at, at keeping my relationships close, doing touches, right? Like new year's, for example, that's when you should go through your list. Happy new year. It's like just saying hi, right? So you're not always just making the touch when you're making an ask. And if you really struggle with networking, please work with your career services office to, to help you through that. And if nothing else, just remember networking is simply helping each other. And while, you know, all of us like to say, I, I hate networking, right? Can you imagine people go around and say, I hate helping each other. Like, no, that that's, that's crazy. That's all it is. And I mean, I think you so have to take this, this idea of networking, take, pull it away for a minute and really think about it in terms of just building relationships. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's, it's just like anything else. You're making friends. Making Who friends. do you think that I do business with every day? Who do I send business to? They're, they're my lawyers. friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lawyers that I like, that I go to lunch with, that I have drinks with, that I want to go to, you know, Palm Springs with. Those are the, you know, the agents that I'm, that I'm friends with. They send me business and I send them potential clients. Why? Because I like them and they like me. That's really the only reason. There's a million lawyers, but friendships, that's, I mean, that's what counts at the end of the day. Yeah. That's how I get referrals and stuff passed off to me and, um, you know, those relationships are, are really important. Um, we had a couple questions about uh, sports law. Um, that's really like my passion. Uh, I have a sports business undergrad. I was sports entertainment law, law school. Um, I don't really do any sports law work because I honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of it in LA. I mean, there's some of it, but I mean, it's mostly entertainment. And I, uh, I do think, I do consider it to be really kind of a, a different animal than it's, yeah, uh, it's, you know, one of my really good friends is a sports lawyer. I mean, this guy, he's at all of the, I mean, I don't even know the terminology, but uh, what would the, what are the annual things they have for, uh, for baseball? Oh, the meetings? No, even before World that. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Something where it's like that he goes, I mean, he travels all over the United States. Spring training. Is that Jeremy Evans? What are those things? Oh what my gosh, I feel like this is a quiz show. Exactly. Yeah. You know, clearly, I don't know anything about sports. So. Uh, clearly, but I don't either. Guy, I said World he, Series. He's all over the United States. He's meeting these players um, at the kind of the very beginning of their careers, you know, um, and he's been doing that, gosh, over a decade. Um, so if you want to do sports, you really got to get into that world and network without, because that is not the same world as film and TV. Yeah. You know, they like uh, to lump, oh, sports and entertainment. They're not the same thing. I really haven't had like the success I was hoping for in LA in sports law. Um, but in, in the meantime, I, I, my goal really is like, look, if I'm going to get back into sports law, I got to be a really, really good general counsel. I got to be able to take any type of business, any type of question, any type of problem, I got to be able to solve it. Um, that's the mentality I've taken and it's really served me well. So if you want to get into sports law, I would go corporate and I would get really good at it. Um, in my, in my practice, I haven't talked much about me. I, I don't specialize really in any area of law. I don't specialize in music. I don't specialize in TV. I don't specialize in movies. I don't specialize in startups. I don't specialize in, in entrepreneurs, but I do all of that. 
So I, I really have like a very diverse um, set of questions and problems that get thrown at me. And it's kind of fun to see how, oh, wait, I saw that issue. You know, I saw that audit clause in this one entertainment contract I saw. And you know what, this, this uh, you know, settlement agreement we're doing with like a license fee, you know what, I'm going to borrow that. I'm going to put that in here now. And it, I really find it very interesting um, uh, to, to work at a very diverse uh, kind of client base and then see a really whole bunch of different problems. And um, I do think it's going to pre prepare me well to eventually make a transition into, uh, into sports law again. So just wanted to add that for my, my fellow sports fans out there. Cause I, <laughs> I'll be honest, like I love my music. I know music pretty well, but uh, hearing some of you folks talk about directors and actors and TV or, and, and the showrunners. And I'm like, I, I, yeah, I, I just, <laughs> so all right, everybody, um, we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I think this has been a really good panel. Um, Julie, Alyssa, Stephen, Jennifer, and Nina, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really think that you, uh, each of you really kind of provided a unique uh, contribution to this panel. And your, your time and your advice tonight is, is really greatly appreciated. Um, so on behalf of the Beverly Hills Bar Association Entertainment Law Section, um, again, I really encourage everybody to join. It's been a really good resource for me in my career. Um, so start uh, join the BHBA and start join, coming to our uh, first Wednesday of every month in the morning is our entertainment law section meetings. And uh, I'd really like to see you all here. Okay. Amazing. Thank yeah. you, Jeff. Thank, and you. thank you, everybody. Thank panelists. you, Jeff, for organizing. This was fun. This was really terrific. Fun. So long, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye.